Welcome back to The Big Build, I'm Robin Clever, and in this episode, Ed and I are doing door linings. Now, if you've watched previous videos on my channel, you see that I use MDF from time to time, and in this instance, we're using a softwood door lining for two reasons. The first reason is MDF prices are, they're pretty high at the moment, so when I start uh, ripping down MDF and having it lipped and edged, it's beautiful stuff, but it's twice the price per lining than the softwood ones. So I've been out and I've selected my softwood linings. Now, years ago, when I started my time, we used to build with block work or stud work, so internal block work or internal stud work, we used to use four by two. Now, over the years, timber became regularized, which means that it's all put through a machine, so it all comes out exactly the right size. So instead of it being four inches, three and seven eighths, four and eighths, it used to vary a little bit, it's all been regularized, but it comes down to sort of like three and three quarter inches now. I'm talking in Imperial, because basically this, that's how we talk about door lining. So standard door lining kits used to be four and a quarter inches or five and a quarter inches. Four and a quarter inches was for a three by two stud wall or a three inch block. And five and a quarter inches was for a four inch stud wall or a four inch block. So all of that's changed. We use so many different types of material, widths, thicknesses, uh, sawn carcassing, CLS. So we end up with different wall thicknesses. We use different thicknesses of plasterboard, for example, here we're using 15 millimeter plasterboard. I like it because it reduces the sound passage even more. It's also really strong and solid and it works well over wide centers like 450s or 600s even before you've got to start putting loads of grounds in. Anyway, that's a, a story for another day. So let's take, for example, our standard door lining kits. They're good value. They're generally um, a fair grade of softwood. You can see I've got a dead knot there that's come out and there's lots of knots and everything else, but providing you knot them or seal the knots or use a primer which will seal it all back like a shellac based primer, these are very good. But what we do is we buy them all at a certain size and we're gonna rip them down. So for example, this doorway here, the overall thickness of the lining or the overall width of the lining I want it for allowing for the plaster skim that's going to come in is 125 millimeters. So I will rip these down on the table saw, we'll then pop them through the thicknesser and that will create perfect edges again. Then we'll give them a bit of a, take the arises off the face edges, knot them, prime them, then we'll assemble them and fit them. So we've got quite a few to do and we've got two different whips. We've got this 126 and we've also got where we've got a, a wall which is positioned in three trusses or three a three ply truss, we've got 176. So in that case, we'll be ripping down a lining or one of the pieces into a few and then we'll be laminating them and gluing them onto the edge to make a wider lining. So we're all sorted out. We've got enough material here to make our door linings up. We've also got a cutting list or a list. There's not really a cutting list at the moment because they're just standard door legs and standard door heads. And all we're doing is reducing them down and in one case, increasing it. We've sorted these out. We've made a note on the odd one, which is twisty. So that one is gonna get trimmed and thickness and that's gonna be used for one of our smaller openings. So what we'll do is I'm gonna just sort out 10 of the best legs standing by the saw. I'll set the saw up to 100 and 26 or 127, and then we'll pop them through the thickness are over there and finish them at 125. So we'll rip everything in one go. We'll rip, stack, rip, stack, pop it through the thicknesser, and then it'd be perfect. And the thicknesser is then replaning it. There's one here that we've done a test on. So this is the original size, and this is one that we've reduced down. That's the planed and thicknessed edge. So it's actually reduced it down to what we need it to be. All right. So that's what we're going to get on and do. It won't take us very long. Just have all the face sides good in the same direction. The reason why we want to have the face sides in the same direction is they're going to be lifted from there and we're going to be pushing the face side 
against the fence because that's the side we're keeping. That'll give us a sawn edge. On the other side, we discard the waste, take it over to our thicknesser, and again, face side against the bed. As it comes through, it's going to clean up that edge that's sawn over on the table saw. So we've got all of our door linings here machined, ready to assemble effectively. But the last job before we start assembling them will be we ease the edges off. Now I've just got a very small beveling guide bush router bit in here. And all I'm doing is taking the tiniest arrows off of here. So this is one that's not been done yet. And these ones have been done. It basically softens the edges. And so when you paint, it's just a much nicer finish. And to give you an example of that, there's some really badly fitted linings here. And these were just straight out of the bag. And then when they sort of put, you get all this furring up and you get this funny sort of bit of mess there. And you get these lovely, horrible, really sharp edges that get caught really easily like that. So we just ease them off. It makes such a difference. And as I say, we're going to use a little router. I'll just run one off. So these two are done. So I'll pop that on there. I'll put another one on top. And then we'll just run that, it's bearing guided, so we'll just turn that on. So we have got the frames well underway. We've just started priming some of these are the first two we need to get in. So instead of finishing them all, we're going to get these put together and take them up. One of them is our wider lining where we actually took another door lining and made an additional piece on and we glued and screwed that on. Screws obviously being covered by the architrave eventually. And so there we have those wide ones and then we're back to a standard. So what we always like to do is because we always have the same amount of fixings in the same position, I'll still screw these back. Sometimes you can nail a software door lining into stud work, but less and less do we do that anymore. When I first started my apprenticeship, it was a 65 mil lost head nail. So you'd set the lining up, you'd brace it, you'd get it in position, you'd pack it, and then you'd fix it by nailing it and then punch the nails under. So it was less filling for the decorator to do. But we always tend to do this with screws now. And so I like to make a story stick. So a story stick, this is just one of the lengths of stocks. I've got a spare length, I'm gonna use this. And all it means is I'm gonna mark on here the basic hinge positions, then I'm gonna mark my fixing holes. So when I've got my linings in, I can either pilot them all the legs now, which I'll probably do while we're down here, or I can put it in against the lining. Let's say this is the lining, I can put it in there upstairs and mark them off. Do you need your screws in the same places? No, of course not. But I like them in the same places. I like to make sure I'm gonna hit, miss my hinges and my handle latches and that sort of stuff. And also get at least one line if you've got a pair of screw fixings, which I like to have to keep, keep the linings from moving around. One will be behind a stop, and one will probably need filling. So take my story stick so I know that when I butt against the top of the head, if you like. Here's the head, let me just put that there. When I, when I butt against the top of here, if I was doing them in situ, I'd want the first hinge position at 150 millimetres or six inches. So first we'll get an arrow, this is up. Now I'm gonna pop on 150 millimetres or six inches, whatever you prefer. And that there is a hinge position. I'm using 76 mil hinges. This is a 76 mil hinge jig. So I'm just gonna use this to mark the hinges effectively. That is where my hinge is effectively. So I know not to fix there. Then I'm using 
The bottom hinge at 225 or nine inches. This is a traditional measurement. So hinge positions on the story stick, arrow to the top, and then what I wanna do is mark where I'm gonna fix my linings. I wanna stay away from the hinges. So I wanna be about 100 down from the head. So I'm gonna have a fixing here. I'll mark them on the side so, so I can get those right. I'll be about 100 up from the bottom as well. Again, you know, then I wanna be one in the middle. So one in the center, which will be on, I'll take it on that hinge anyway. And then we'll just split those others up and we'll have five or six fixing points, whatever you want. You can never have enough fixings, I don't think. And then we're gonna go here. And the same on the bottom, we're just gonna go there again. So now we've got a mark. So if we, always, if we always use this to mark our fixings, we can just put it on the lining and we can always just pilot them out to suit these positions. And at least when you walk around the site and you see all the door linings fixed before the decorate, they all look quite uniform and nice. And if you ask me, I think that makes a lot of difference. So let's get on, get these two together, get them piloted, get them up. I could put the hinge, uh, route the hinges in now, but I can just do that in situ when I decide which way around the door is gonna go once we've had a meeting with a client and ask them because their word is final. Test. This is the trickiest one to be fair. Yeah, so that's nice and plumb and there's no, there's no gaps in between there. So we know it's nice and straight. Obviously this was the original brace we put on by the measure. So we know if we get this nice and plumb here and you put a small level on here, you know it's gonna be level. Because if this is plumb and that's square, that's level. And then as long as we keep this side brace on the bottom like that, and we keep this nice and straight, nice and true, like you said, then you're in good shape. Okay, so we also screwed them. Mm -hmm. And that's partly because I did say earlier that I used to nail these. So I'd set it up, wedge it, and I'd actually nail them with 65 mil, like a lost head nail, punch them under. Yeah. That's how we were taught how to do it in college. But now, with the screws that we've got, like these small spat screws, which is actually a flooring screw, but it's perfect when you're going into stub work and you haven't got a lot of gap between. Yeah. They're brilliant because even when we come to swing the door, let's say, for example, you just want to ease the center of this lining back. You take out the bottom, take out these ones, take out these ones, take out one of them and loosen it in and out on the other one, tighten them all back up. They're absolutely brilliant. So that's another advantage. Then we put our architraves on and jobs are good. Un. Right, I've got some little ones to fix now. Um, I've been making them up. I'm going to bring them up and fix them in. One of them is an angled one. Let's have a look at that. Here's the little angled frame. It's for there. I made it off the measure, so I made it parallel. I made it a certain height. I made it at 90 degrees, obviously. And then I dissected the angle at 45 degrees. So this should slot into this hole, famous last words. I know we're all a little bit tight on tolerance. But wait, it's just the way we produce stuff. Now this is gonna go in here. That's good. There we go. That doesn't look bad. Check the bottom. Check it with plumb this way. Screw that in. Fix the top. Hold it plumb. Fix the bottom. And that's pretty much it. 